Okay, welcome to the Angel Wing LLC. This is Sachin Karnik. Today is the 4th of October 2023. Uh, we are at week number 13 in our um, Angel Wings online self mastery and personal transformation program. This is our trial run uh, with Dr. Chetna Group. <laughs> And we are going to continue at this point. There are two disclaimer statements, which will be available to you um, in PDF format when you um, sign in and when you sign up. This is the first one. We've gone through this before, and there's a new one that has been just added, but this will be added to all of the other uh, presentations, the first 12 presentations. This is about me, actually, about my involvement in the quantum transformation program. So this uh, particular statement and this uh, writing will be available uh, at the very beginning of the program when people sign into this. Just an understanding of what this quantum transformation program is about and my role in that is also explained here. So with that, we are continuing uh, our progression uh, towards the balanced state. And in doing so, uh, in, in our, in our uh, continuation today, just a moment here. This computer is getting a little slow here. I don't know what, what happened. Okay, there we go. We're going to start with a grounding meditation as we oh. and then go from there. So for some reason, it's not playing the media. So hold on. Let's do it this way. Sometimes the mind can feel like a pack of wild horses jumping around from past to present to future, refusing to sit still. And like a pack of wild horses, trying to force the mind to be still just doesn't work. The horses are wild in nature after all. But with practice and time, we can train the mind to be aware of when it's galloping in all directions and we can guide it back to the present moment with a kind and friendly hand. So let's see if we can practice taming the mind by taking a few mindful deep breaths. Sometimes, of when it's galloping in friendly hand. So let's see if we can practice taming the mind by taking a few mindful deep breaths. Whoever you are now, get comfortable. Eyes can be open or closed and perhaps relaxing the shoulders. And now, taking a deep breath, breathing in through the nose and breathing out through the mouth. Noticing what thought or sensation the mind is chasing after. And again, just gently taking another deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. One last time, breathing in and breathing out. Similar to the wild horses, over time, the mind can become more tame, more calm, and may even start to enjoy more moments of stillness. Remember to just keep practicing. So okay, well, welcome back. We are now going to start our workshop. 
Uh, this is just a quick review from last time. Principle number 12 is, was about awakened intelligence. Hopefully you had a chance to um, do this uh, three times a day um, before each meal, just to read this. In our next set of weeks, the next, you know, our next quarter, essentially next set, uh, series of 13 weeks, we'll be going into these principles in more detail and special modules will also be available for them. So this was principle number 12 about awakened intelligence from last time. And there was homework to be done also. Hopefully you completed that. If you haven't, please do make sure you are uh, on track with that. Uh, our central concept has been broken down into seven parts, as you can see, as we look at this every time. And we're in the seventh point right now, especially with regards to the vitamin M concept of money. So energy flow, money is a type of energy, and uh, this uh, allows for the realization of potential in all aspects of life. So financial wisdom through awakened intelligence, and we're going to do this now together. There's some exercises to be done, and I'll kind of I'll guide you right through that. Okay. So today we embark on a uh, an individual exploration to perceive money from a more holistic lens, blending financial insights with elevated awareness. This evocative imagery and succinct narratives we, uh, I mean, through evocative imagery and succinct narratives, we invite you to witness money not merely as a transactional tool, but as a catalyst that can empower and manifest one's life's deepest desires and aspirations. We all have desires in life, but to fulfill them, this is a transactional tool. It's a very important point. So what I'd like you to do, just at this point, I'd like you to open workbook number one, and I'd like you to write uh, today's date on top. And in doing so, I'd like you to write down the following phrase, that money is a transactional tool. Just write that, that, write that small sentence down. Money is a transactional tool. We're doing some writing today. Pretty easy and simple. Just write that down as the title uh, of the theme for today. And we're going to go into this now. Harmonizing wealth and well-being, the enlightened path to financial fulfillment. So first of all, you can see here, there's a beautiful picture of mountain and lake and all. So nature's balance, the essence of mindful wealth. So write this down as the first bullet point, mindful wealth. Write that down, write that word down. Cultivating financial health through intrinsic values. So you can see there, there is the image, a serene landscape with mountains in the background, a calm lake reflect, reflecting the sky in a single end and some trees. And there's and like a single tree is there, but there's, I don't know if you can see it in there or not. The main concept here is that to use money as a vitamin for life. If we know how to do this, and just I'm going to be talking a little bit just to clarify the concept, so listen carefully, please. And if you want to make some notes, it's okay. Just as you can see the peak of, of the mountain, you can see there's a variety of peaks in this picture. Similarly, once we learn the principle of using money as a vitamin, we can we can climb these peaks and our financial strength increases. Yes, the amount of money increases, but it doesn't increase in terms of greed or it doesn't increase in terms of uh, just a type of competition with others. It increases intrinsically within. So we'll, you will see how that works. So to understand this idea, to understand money is to understand its role in our lives. Let's explore how awakened intelligence can guide us. So what I'd like you to do next is to write in the next bullet point, awakened intelligence equals vitamin M. Write that down, please. Awakened intelligence equals vitamin M. And that's the growth of the financial freedom we all want, doesn't matter what stage of life we're in. We need to learn how to use money as a, as a vitamin without deficiency, without being miserly, without being egotistical, without being stingy, but at the same time, really using it properly in the best possible way. So awakened intelligence equals vitamin M. And you can see all the, the, the picture of all those $100 stacks there. That's the growth. So it's the, it's the parallel between the two. 
On the right side of the screen, you see mind with all of the interconnections, right? So that's what we're headed towards. So in, in workbook number one, I want you to write down uh, in the next bullet point exactly what's written there. Money is not just paper. It's our energy. It's an energy exchange. It reflects our values, desires, and aspirations. Write that down, please. That money is not just paper. Obviously, we know that money is not just paper. It is an energy exchange. A very, very relevant point. If you have a marker, highlight that, underline that. That's exactly what it is. This is one of the most important truths to understand, which many people have never thought about it that way. And we're going to explain that. We're going to get into that further and in our special modules also on vitamin M. So money reflects, it, it, it's a reflection, this exchange. Now let's make sure we, we're clear on understanding this, that the exchange of money for goods and products, et cetera, it is a reflection of values that we have, reflection of our desires and our aspirations. So write the next bullet point, that vitamin M equals my values. Then write next bullet point, vitamin M equals my desires. Next bullet point, vitamin M equals my aspirations. You gotta make this really personal. It's not just an idea, it's just applicable to our transformative journey. Right, so vitamin M equals my values. Write that down, please. Vitamin M equals my desires. Vitamin N, M equals my aspirations. Wonderful. Having done that, hopefully you've done that. We talked about this a bit last time, misuse and abuse of money. You can see the picture on the right. Burning, you know, money that's being burned. How does this burn? There's two things that burn in life. Our internal energy is burned away by misuse of money and time and whatnot. You know, but can you imagine taking those $100 bills and setting them on fire? How terrible is that? But that's what so many people do with credit card debts, with addictions like gambling, with so many other types of misuses and abuses, right? So in workbook one, let's just see this carefully. Misuse, misusing money can drain, excuse me, misusing money can drain life's vitality. Like a vitamin overdose, too much or too little is harmful. This is important to understand. Sometimes people are greedy. They want a lot very quickly. They might get it, but then they wind up really harming themselves. And then, or sometimes they're, they just are not even using what's needed in life. That's not going to work. So misusing money can drain life's vitality. In workbook one, as the next bullet point, write this down. Misusing money can drain my vitality, make it personal. Misusing my money can drain my vitality. This has to be applicable to us directly. Application is everything. Just, just only write that much down for now. Okay, now. The concept of money as a vitamin. What, why? What does that mean exactly? Easy to understand. Money when used used judiciously, used properly the way it ought to be used for, to get the biggest bang for the buck. What does it do? It nurtures nurtures our goals, our dreams and ambitions. It energizes life. So in your workbook, write this down, that money used judiciously. Just write that much down only, three words. Money used judiciously. And underneath that, make three dashes and put dash number one, goals, dash two, dreams, dash three, amb ambitions. And then circle the word money and make an arrow to the right or to the left and then make a bubble in there and, and, and write inside that bubble vitamin M. To use it as a vitamin means to use the right amount that energizes 
maximum in our life, that it creates the maximum happiness in our life. Nobody eats a whole bowl of vitamins. We take a couple of vitamins, but if they are in connection with so many other chemicals and nutrients, they energize and they give us good health. The same thing is true with money, to be used as a vitamin. Awakened intelligence. Let's try to understand this here. It's not about how much we have, it's how we use it. This is the key point. Awakened intelligence helps us spend, save, and invest with clarity. And we're gonna do an exercise in just a moment. In workbook one, what I'd like you to do is put awakened intelligence, put a bigger bullet point to say awakened intelligence equals how I use my money. It's not about the quantity, it's the quality of the use. And that's all a decision made inside our mind, inside our brain. Very easy to understand. Now we're gonna do a little drawing exercise here. And the objective here, this is called the clarity jar visualization exercise. So maybe you can go to the next page. I don't know how much space you have in your book or your drawing. You can, if you're using drawing paper, you can do that and put you know today's date on top and put the title clarity jar visualization. What's the objective here? To create a visual representation of the idea. It's not about how much we have, but how we use it. Awakened intelligence helps us spend, save, and invest with clarity. We're going to go into this in our exercise today. So clarity jar visualization. Okay. So here's the drawing exercise. The objective is to create a visual that represents this idea. Hopefully, if you have drawing paper, it's great. Pencils or colored markers or pens are also very good to have. So what I'd like you to do is to draw a large jar in the center of your paper. This jar represents your life's resources, not just monetary, but time, energy, talents. They're all connected together. So money is there, no doubt. But money is connected to time, is connected to energy, connected to one's inherent talents. It's all intersected together. So draw a large jar in the center of your paper. There's a little picture on the right. You can draw that kind if you want or whatever you want. It's fine. It's up to you. Okay, very good. If you draw in that jar, what we're going to do is to split this jar into three segments. All right, so spend save and invest. So just make a line that splits it into three parts. The spend parts, this segment symbolizes the immediate use of resources like daily expenses, experiences, and short-term pleasures. So that's the spend part. Maybe you put that on the top. You can you can structure any way you want, but you can put, put maybe spend on the top and you can put save in the middle and invest at the bottom or you can flip them around if you want whichever way makes sense to you. Spend, save, and invest. And once you write those three words down, what you can do is make an arrow if you want, you know, after the word spend, and write, write down expenses, experiences, short-term pleasures. And then, the same, and then with the save part, you know, it just represents our resources we keep for the future, ensuring security and preparedness. So save part is for security and preparedness make an arrow. And the invest part denotes long-term use of resources where we hope to see growth and multiplication. So like education, self-growth, any monetary investments. So when we invest, we're looking for long-term use. So make an arrow saying long-term use of resources. Get it clear. Make sure this is very clear in the mind. It's very easy to understand. Anyone in sixth grade education or more can understand this. Easy to understand. Maybe even fifth grade. Spend, save, and invest. You divide the jar into three parts. And then write down the key words, which I've asked you to write down. Under, next to spend is expenses, experiences, and short-term pleasures. You know, the, that's, when we spend, that's what we get. We get an experience from spending. We, get, we can pay our expenses, things like that. And we get some short-term, immediate, you know, we get something for spending that money, immediate enjoyment or experience. Save is, is for ensuring for the future. 
security and preparedness, and investment is for growth and multiplication, for further growth of energy for, uh, and of resources. Okay. All right. So good, if you've done that already, now what we're gonna do here, fill the jar. Now imagine you have a fixed amount of colored water represented by a color of your choice. So fill the jar. So imagine you have a fixed amount of colored water represented by the color of your choice. Visualize pouring this water into the jar. How much would you allocate for each segment? Remember, the exercise is about using resources with clarity, not how much you have to use. So make, make sure this point is clear. So this is kind of a visualization exercise. You can, if you have different color pens, you can do this later on also uh, as a homework exercise. But right now you can do it visually. Imagine pouring water into the jar. How much would you allocate for each, each segment? So this is about using the current resources. So what I'd like you to do is to visualize your current financial accounts. Maybe your checking account, your saving account. You should know what the number is in your mind, right? How See in your mind where that division is between spend, save, and invest. Right now, this is this obviously can one of those things that is going to take a little more time to do, but just just get the process started. You know, see it inside that you're pouring into the jar. Meaning, what this is a certain amount of money that's available, or when you get a paycheck, that's like being poured into the jar. You know, when payment comes, when money comes into the account, that's like being poured into the jar. It gets, and then the point is to segment it out into three parts. You know, so shade or color the segments based on your visualization. So you can do this as a homework exercise a bit later on, make a nice poster out of it. Even kids and adolescents can, can do this as great uh, projects, uh, wonderful, easy projects to do. Even in elementary school, you can do uh, stuff like this. All right, so nice and easy. So you can do this however you want. If you want to make some lines through or shade, shade somehow and, and uh, imagine filling it. Uh, the point is, how the resource is used, how that water is used, how is it divided, how is the money divided? This is the key. And that's a bigger discussion to have with your family or your loved one or whoever is on your account. Right? So those are ongoing ideas. Okay, wonderful. Now, next part here, this is a very interesting part. Around the jar, Draw elements representing factors influencing spending, saving, and investing. And I'm going to, going, to, going to show them what they are for you. You don't need to write anything just yet. I want you to understand this first. So around the jar, what you're going to do is draw elements representing factors influencing your spending, saving, and investing decisions. For example, the family might, family, uh, might influence saving, while a desire to learn might influence investing in education. Sketch symbols around the, the jar showing what impacts your money choices. For instance, your family might push push you to save. Don't write anything yet. I'm going to show, uh, show you those factors in just a moment. Draw items near the jar explaining why you spend, keep, uh, or, or growth of your funds, growing your funds. A learning urge could point to educational investments. Illustrate cues encircling the jar that tell what drives your financial habits. A love, a love for travel could signify spending, for example. All right, so those are the general ideas. Now, let's take a look at this. What I want you to do is, let's see if this opens up here. Good, okay. These are some factors that influence spending. So on your spend jar, on the outside, take a look at these. Immediate needs, peer pressure, marketing, advertising, emotional states, lifestyle, lifestyle choices, access to credit, financial education. These are some of the factors, key factors, that influence spending, you know? So I think all of us would put immediate needs. So, you know, make some error, make, make a bridge there between the spend part of the diagram and then select from here in your life, what do you think are the biggest pieces from here that influence your spending? Okay, so for example, um, immediate needs, I think everybody would have to put that. But peer pressure, maybe to some extent, some just depends on your situation. You're with a group of friends and they're pushing you to spend money in a particular way, maybe. Being swayed by commercials, promotions, sales, things like that, that influences our spending. Our emotional states, that's a big one. I think everybody could put that one there. 
you know, immediate needs and emotional states, I think everybody can put that. Stress, happiness, sadness, all these emotional states, they trigger our spending. Lifestyle choices, the you know, preferences like dining out, traveling, hobbies, obviously, those are those are factors that do influence spending. If you eat out a lot, that's going to take more money in that. That's another factor. Access to credit. This is another big one. A lot of people have, you know, loans and credit card debt because of this reason. There's a very small percentage of people that don't use any credit cards. That's a great thing, but usually it doesn't work that way. So having credit cards or loans, having access to credit influences our decision to spend. And financial education, lack of knowledge may lead to unwise spending, not knowing how to spend money in the best way or where to invest, what to do with it. And so that can also be a difficulty. So out of those, there's many more, but there's we'll stay with these for now. Select the ones that are applicable to you and write them down on the outside of the jar. And you can write down whatever you want from there. And you can even put things like stress or happiness, or you can just put emotional states if you want. It's, it's up to you. But I, I mean, I would say that everybody, if not nearly everybody, immediate needs, everybody has them. Emotional states, I think almost 99.999% of the people would have to put that. Lifestyle choices, I think everybody would have to put that. Most people have credit. I think that's another piece. Unless you're just paying off the credit card bill every time. You know, if you are accumulating credit card debt, that influences spread spending also and increases stress. So there's a philosophy called buy now, pay now. That means don't accumulate debt. You may have some, get rid of it, and don't accumulate any. That causes our internal energy to get fragmented and stress and tension occur because of it. So these are factors influencing spending. Now we're going to look at factors influencing saving. So there's a bunch of them here. You can see it on the screen here. These are future goals, aspirations like buying a house, traveling, starting a new business. You know, what things that we want to achieve in the future are aspirations, future goals. If we have future goals, we're going to need to save, save money. Security needs, the rainy day fund idea. Wanting an emergency fund for unexpected expenses. These are this is not anything we don't know, but do we actually have this? It's a question. You know, security needs. So factors influencing saving. Retirement planning. What is the planning for retirement? Ensure comfort in the later years. Is enough money going to come? Enough social security going to come? How much to withdraw from the savings? How much to pay for medical? How much to pay for insurance? How much to pay? this this all needs to be done before significantly before retirement. Then life events, preparing for events like marriage, childbirth, education, or, or assisting children, things like that. Life events. So write down from here, whichever ones are most applicable to you in your current situation. Factors influencing savings tax benefits. Some saving options may offer tax deductions, like IRAs or I don't know, whatever. It's just there are a bunch of different things that are possible. Income level, high or, or consistent income might take might make it easier to save, obviously. But many people may high, I mean, there might be people who have high income, but they spend so much, they don't wind up saving a whole lot. So again, I, I in my mind, I would make a distinction between saving and being miserly. They're not the same. You know, miserly is you can't even you have difficulty even spending what needs to be spent. And saving is vitamin M is a high energy phenomenon, which really energizes and, and it can get the maximum enjoyment in life, experiences of life, without having to spend an inordinate amount of money. That's the central idea of vitamin M. Cultural beliefs. Some cultures prioritize savings as a key value. Depends on culture. You know, some people <laughs> in, in some of the Western cultures, they don't even think about the next one month or two months. They're just living for the day only. And then there's other cultures that really think even generations ahead. So it just all uh, depends on the culture and the belief system. These are factors that influence saving. Write those down outside the jar. You can put a box around them or whatever you want to do and then connect it with the, with the jar. Okay, then the third part here 
is factors influencing investing. So this is interesting. Now take a look at these, you know, return expectations, hoping to get significant returns on investment. Okay, so that's why, why does a person invest in the stock market or invest in IRAs or whatever it is, or, or a business, for example, what's the return you're planning on getting? Hoping to get significant returns on investing. Risk tolerance, willing willingness to invest in volatile markets or safer bonds. How much risk are you willing to take? These are factors that influence investing. Third part is market knowledge. We live in a capitalistic society. Awareness of stock markets, real estate, and other investment avenues. If you don't have proper market knowledge and you have a significant amount of money to invest, where are you going to invest? You have to have uh, guidance for that. We are going to provide some general guidance for this in Angel Wing in, uh, in special modules. Financial goals, desiring, uh, desiring passive income or wealth multiplication. You know, so what is the concept of passive income? Maybe like, you know, for example, the real estate can be passive income. You just own some property, people are leasing it out, renting it out or whatever they're doing, and you get regular income from that without you having to do a whole lot. That's passive income. Even writing books and publications and things like that, people have that online these days. That's also there. So that's there. Then you have tax implications. Some investments might have Tax advantages, so if you talk to the tax people, we are going to give general guidelines across the board on the financial avenues and financial aspects. Professional advice recommendation from financial advisors and tax consultants, of course that's needed, that goes with the tax implication, but also in terms of the growth factor. Uh, and economic climate, or the overall state of the economy can influence investment decisions, right? So right from here, whatever you feel, is most applicable to you in your situation right now. And it really is applicable to nearly everybody. Uh, I mean, maybe, except for maybe young children, you know, so. Okay, so these are the factors here. All right, so this is fine. Now we're gonna move on forward from here. Oh, let's see. All right, so we're gonna reflect on this now. In the, in the top right corner, draw, draw a cloud inside write or draw your interpretation of awakened, awakened intelligence what does it look like and how does it guide your decisions it's a reflection cloud okay so you make a nice cloud on the top of the page somewhere you do it the way you want and what does awakened intelligence look like having gone through this exercise write your interpretation in any which way you want. And if you can't think of anything right now, just you know, just make a note in there to write to, uh, to complete that later on. What does it look like for you? What, do you? what are you feeling right now? What's coming to your mind right now? Write it over there. That's a reflection cloud. cloud. Just as clouds have all, you know, they're basically composed of raindrops. And then when the time comes, the, the rain falls. Just like that, within you, there's... Awakened intelligence, more energy, more understanding of money. What does that mean to you? What are you experiencing right now? Write that over there in that cloud. It could be just a word. It doesn't have to be anything extensive. Okay, and at the bottom of the page, write clarity jar visualization. So make sure you put that like as a subtitle or something like that, you know, the, like a, uh, a, a legend for the... Um, for the, for the picture you created. This way you can reflect back on your visualization in the future and see how your priorities and, and clarity evolve. So we'll be going back to these, all these drawings we've made, we'll be going back to them time, time and time again to reflect on them and to, and to see how they can grow, right? So that's that part. And this is for discussion and reflection. We can probably do this a little bit later on, uh, you know, at, at the end of, of the session today. But just for, for right now, I would just simply ask you, uh, ask you to take a moment and to see, you know, are you content with how you've allocated your resources? Question number one, you know, how does awakened intelligence guide these decisions? Question number two, this is a homework assignment actually. So uh, when you do your homework, so you can just put in there that to answer these questions as part of your homework, and you'll get these slides uh, online you know, uh, saying that this is a homework assignment. Are there areas you want to change or adjust in your re real life based on this visualization, right? So 
you can write a paragraph or two about this to reflect on it during the week once you've completed the drawing. Okay, so that's what this is about. It's about making better decisions and aligning your actions with your values and goals. All right, so we're going to do this little stretch break now, and then we'll continue to the, towards the end after that. I'm so glad you're joining us for a quick movement break. You should aim to integrate movement into your workday at least every 30 minutes of uninterrupted sitting time. Doing so can reduce your risk of weight gain, high blood pressure, and obesity. Let's get started. Begin by standing. Root both feet into the ground. Take a great big inhale and reach both hands high above your head. On your exhale, goal post the arms and lift the chest, finding a baby back bend. Back bends can quickly boost your energy levels and help to refocus your mind when dealing with stress. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, lift the chest and goal post the arms. Place your hands down by your side. Now bring your right knee up to your chest. Try to balance here as long as you can. Feel the stretch in the back of your leg and lower back. Now slowly bring your foot back behind you and pull it towards your glutes, stretching through the front of your hips. You may want to hold on to something in order to help keep your balance. Let's switch to the other side. Bring your left knee up to your chest. Try to balance here as long as you can. Feel the stretch in the back of your leg and lower back. Now slowly bring your foot back behind you Pull it towards your glutes, stretching through the front of your hips. Bring both feet back together. Next, bend your arms by your side and begin to twist right and left, opening up into your sides and spine. You can leave your arms bent or straighten them out depending on the space you have available. Twisting the spine back and forth can help relieve any tension in the lower back from sitting. Lastly, place your feet about hips distance. Then place your hands onto your hips. Take an inhale and lift the chest up and exhale slowly beginning to lower the chest down. As you begin to fold forward, bend the knees to begin lengthening through the hamstrings until your chest touches the tops of your thighs. You can dangle your arms down towards the floor or grab onto your elbows. Stay here to continue lengthening through the spine or you can sway side to side. Bring the hands back to your hips, and on your next inhale, slowly begin to rise up. Head comes up last. Great work on integrating this quick physical activity break into your busy day. Setting a reminder on your phone or computer can help you remember to fit in regular breaks. Breaks don't have to take up too much of your time and can be effective with just a few short minutes. Low intensity activities such as standing can be just as beneficial as walking. We encourage you to take a stand against sitting. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are continuing forward now. Please open workbook number two, and you will see that we have been, if you've allocated workbook number two for the 12 dimension, uh, assess self-assessment. There's a scale from zero to 10 for each of these 12 dimensions. And just for clarification purposes, this, given this is our trial run, what we'll be doing when we actually do the run in January, you know, when we do the, uh, the actual run with the participants, uh, these 12 dimensions will be discussed from um, weeks 2 through 10. All 10 of them will be covered, uh, like uh, two of them will be covered each week like that until all 12 are covered, uh, because we need to have weeks 12 and 13 for the vitamin M concept. Uh, so, but for now, for today at least, I want you to just keep in mind that our goal is to reach a stage of 70% uh, of, of the of the potential number, you know. So if you look at this here, okay, so these are the 12 dimensions, the core energy diagram that you should be familiar with. Hold on, I'm having a little thing here with these slides here, just a moment here. You're assessing each of those dimensions from a, zero, a scale of zero to 10, and make sure you put the numbers in the Excel spreadsheet. So you're doing that every single week. At the end of each week, you're giving a number for each of those areas. Where are you? This is your own assessment. And we're going to talk about this in more detail in the next uh, segment, next 13-week segment. Okay, and um, 
you're also putting down a small sentence in workbook number two, what you need to do uh, to, hold on one second here. For some reason, I'm having difficulty with this PowerPoint. It's getting stuck for some reason. But what you need to do is to be able to identify where the obstacle is in each of those dimensions that is preventing the number from getting uh, 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 towards a 10, right? So just a moment here. This is somehow it's getting stuck over here. So there is a weekly tracking from zero to 10 for each of those. You've got the Excel spreadsheet. And, and in doing so, um, and, and in doing so, the goal is to reach a 70% level. I'm having some trouble with these slides here. Sorry about that. I'm trying to navigate through this. Let me just escape out of here. I don't know why that's, hold on a second. For some reason, Let's just hold on one moment. Sometimes these computers. Just a moment here. It's not even scrolling at this point. Okay, so a well, little technical snafu here. Just just a moment here. I'm trying to gain control over this. All right. So what is our goal? I, I want this to be really clear. We want to be at 70%. That means that a total score of 84 or more is what we're looking for, you know, uh, on the average all the way through. So when we get to 13 weeks, at the end of 13 weeks, in the Excel spreadsheet that I sent you, uh, it'll calculate it automatically when you put the, put the numbers in, in there, and it'll give you the percentage of what that percentage is, right? So that is our goal here. So, uh, so we're not going to focus today on specifically any particular dimension, but do keep in mind that the vitamin M concept is in the dimensions, right? So where is that in the dimension? That is actually dimension number two, and it, and it intersects with all the others. Just for understanding purposes, that if financial situations are in trouble, it's going to cause imbalance in everything in life. So that that's where this, this core energy diagram really is of maximum relevance, simply because our internal energies, our own other uh, interactions with other people, other areas of one's life, this all gets imbalanced when money is not used as a vitamin. If there's debt, there's there's tension, there's arguments over money, there's, uh, uh, there's um, difficulty in, in obtaining enough, all of those kinds of things will completely imbalance all 12 areas. So, so keep that in mind as we try to further understand, uh, you know, the 12 dimensions that are and their interconnections. So for this week in your homework assignment, as, as every week, is to put a number at the end of each week. So you look at the last week number where you were on a scale of 0 to 10 for each of these. That's what the X just means, the number you're putting in. And then what needs to be done to increase that? Again, we haven't spent a whole lot of time on that yet because we're just we're doing other things yet. We're just getting this process started. But we're going to go into this in the next series of 13 weeks in much more detail about how to increase these numbers significantly, you know, for, for, uh, beyond a seven. You know, if each of the numbers in each of the areas is beyond a seven, you're in pretty good shape. That's what we want. But if it's like a five or a three or a two, or sometimes if there's like a serious mental health issue or some other physical health problem, you have to seek professional uh, advice or professional treatment or, or, or professional guidance for that because we are not a, a treatment program, right? So that's there. But also I do want, want you to keep in mind things like family and relationships. If someone is having a serious family issue, what we're providing is a general model for improving yourself. And you can kind of go through that. That's fine. But if there's some kind of a psychotherapy or family intervention required, you would have to seek professional help for that. Okay, and and um, and then the other areas like a religious and spiritual life, um, recreational and leisure life, things like that. These are these are based on your own perception. We've kind of talked about an overview of this in the, I think in weeks weeks number one and two. So if you don't remember some of that, what that all refers to, go back and listen to those recordings. But in simple language, I think we can you pretty much would know 
you know, what they are, uh, where you are with that. Uh, I mean, there's people who don't spend any time, for example, in recreation and leisure, they're workaholics or whatever. Those numbers might be really low. That's possible. You know, so so it just it just all depends. There's people who may be spending an inordinate amount of time trying to give back to the society, but they're ignoring other aspects of their life. That could happen also. And then I, I would hypothesize not too many people have a high number for number 12, which is life vision. You know, like focusing on long-term goals and aspirations. What does the legacy look like? What does the future look like? What do you want your life to look like overall? That's a that's a big question, you know. So um, it's good to start thinking about that. Select a number that makes sense to you and kind of go from there. Okay, so having said that, let's move on further. This is, I think this is working okay now. All right, so what I'd like you to do at this point uh, is I'd like you to take out your blank, take out a new blank three by five card and put here principle number 13. This is the principle for 13, week number 13 in our first series here. And write down what you see on the screen, sincerity and consistent effort in the right direction. All right, so we're gonna continue forward. Assuming you're at 70% or more, you will have the opportunity to move into the next phase uh, if you're not at that level, I may need to repeat some of these modules, modules, but you can always start the next phase. It's not a problem, but we'll see how it goes, you know, but this is principle number 13, that sincerity and consistent effort in the right direction. What does that mean? So, oops, hold on one second. Where, where did that go? There we go. Maintaining authenticity and exerting consistent effort are pivotal in personal development and attaining of one's objectives. Write this down, please. This is, uh, so there's two sentences here. Authenticity entails, in, there's three sentences. Authenticity entails adhering to one's core principles and values with honesty. Persistent effort, on the other hand, underscores the importance of perseverance in the face of challenges while striving for your aspirations. So this is the principle number 13 for personal transformation. If we master this principle, we're in a quantum state. You know, so these are actually all quantum transformation principles. We have 52 of them outlined. This is 13, and each one is to be practiced each week. So let's talk about this a little bit so I can so we can understand it clearly. Maintaining authentic, authentic, authenticity. It means recognizing what are my core values and principles. We have to see that genuinely, honestly. And then on that basis, I can be authentic to my own life. If I'm lying to myself or if I'm not even seeing myself clearly, then that's not going to work. You know, then, then that uh, will not allow the right effort to be placed in the right direction. So then the second part here is persistent effort. So sincerity and consistent effort it means persevering, continuing in the face of challenges. So for example, if our aspirations are to reach you know, a truly balanced state where, where the 12 dimensions of life are at you know, 80, 90% of maximum, like uh, if you have a 10 all the way down, that means you are at 100%. You know? So that would, be, that would be a 100% balanced state. That's a tough one. It is very unlikely that would happen in anyone's life, but it can happen. It's not impossible. Right? You can get to 90. If you get to 90%, you're really, really in excellent shape. So the point here is persistent effort day to day, week to week, participating in this process of personal transformation allows all of us, including me, to go through this process towards further development in life and not getting bogged down uh, in wrong directions, in areas that are binding, negative loops, things like that. But authenticity is the foundation. One has to be true to oneself as oneself. That's the foundation. So please write this down and please remember, you're gonna look at this card, this three by five card before breakfast, lunch, dinner, and just read, read the sentence one time. That's all you have to do. And if you wanna think about it some more or do something more with that, you can. All right, so if you're ready to go to the next part, so this is our central concept. You should all already have this written down. Hopefully you're reading this every day. 
If you're reading this every day, you may have it may even have it memorized by now. You know, the human mind with its intricate workings and endless complexities is a fascinating phenomena that requires a substantial amount of energy to function. However, this energy can be drained by personal conflicts that arise both within and outside ourselves. When we take steps to reduce and eventually eliminate the unnecessary dissipation of our inner energy, we can experience an extraordinary revitalization and conservation of our life force. This revitalized energy can then permeate every aspect, the 12 dimensions of our lives, unobstructed and without disturbance, leading to a powerful foundation upon which limitless possibilities become available and realizable. This is our entire one-year plan, second-year plan, third year, all the way up to the way that conceptually six, seven years beyond lifelong. Lifelong, we have to work on this. This is the thing. This has everything. So uh, our entire program is encapsulated in this. It's good to read this every day. Please make it a point to read it every day. And I need to change one thing on here, actually. Uh, this is actually week number 13. Just a moment. It's the same statement. It's not anything anything new. Well, so do allow me to make a change. Okay, hold on here. For some, for some reason, my programs, didn't, they didn't load completely properly. That's why it's getting stuck somewhere along the line here. But anyway, that's that. Um, my computer is stuck at this point. So what we're going to have to do at this point, what I'd like you to do, I'd like you to take out your vitamin M envelope, and I'd like you to put money in that envelope. So I don't know how much you're putting in there. Maybe it's $10, $20, but you put money in that envelope. You should have certain amounts saved. I don't know how much it is. It could be $50 or $100 or $200. It's up to you, right? So you're. this is, again, you're putting it in there to understand the vitamin M concept. And this week, what I'd like you to do again is to allocate 10% of what you have in there and use it in a meaningful way, maybe to invest, maybe to buy something, but use it judiciously and responsibly without any misuse or abuse. See if you can do that. And, 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 then, and then what you what I would request you to do, which I don't think I requested you last time, but we'll make that modification when we run the program, is to write down in workbook number one how you use that money. And so how much money is there uh, at the end of uh, week number 11? How much money is saved in week number 12? 10% of it is used for something judiciously. What did you use it for? Was it judicious? What was the experience behind that? I'd like you to write a paragraph or so about how you used it. You know, it, it might be something as simple as taking $20 and buying a really nice shirt, but, but you're going to use for the whole year, Go, you know, whatever. But for you, from your perspective, it's judicious, it's responsible, it's not misused. This is the idea. Right? So that the concept needs to be really, really harnessed inside. You know, then then this then this really takes hold. Okay, we're at the end of today's presentation. We're going to do the closing song here. Never give up song. Then we'll then we can do, go into our question and answer session afterwards. So just a moment here. Um, I wonder why that's not playing. I don't know. For some reason, that video just hold, hold on one second. I'm gonna to have to go to the YouTube for this. I have to reload that thing. Just a second here, please. Well, Just a moment. Hmm. All right. Well, my computer is stuck. Now, I don't know why this is happening. It never happens, but for some unusual reason. So just a moment, see if I can undo this. Give me just a moment here, please. Hold on. Just a second.
Well, I think we'll have to stop here because by it, this is not working at all. I don't know why, but I think it's uploading something or another. I'm not sure. So, so unless unless I can figure this out, give me. I'll try one more thing here. Let's see if I can get this to run. No, it's not working. So I'm going to have to restart the computer again. So I'm going to stop the recording here. That's the Never Give Up song.